The topic of immortality is often bandied about and discussed by a lot of people, but I want to add my particular views to this discussion. To put it straight out, immortality is a curse. If we think about it for more than just a moment, we can see why immortality is nothing but an unmitigated, unrelenting horror that could be inflicted upon somebody one day. If technology progresses as it does, one day we will actually have to have this discussion in a meaningful, real, current manner, but for now it's all theoretical. Even in the theory, it becomes nightmarish. Because think about it, if you are truly and completely immortal, and I do not just mean immortal to the passage of time, but I mean immune to death in the literal sense, where nothing can ever kill you or destroy you or break you down, however have you, you must last then, forever. It's a term, forever, we use a lot as well, like immortality, that we don't grasp the full meaning of, wherein forever is forever. It last forever. It is, there's no other word to put with forever to give it extra context because forever is infinite. In reality, what we're saying is you must live until the heat death of the universe and beyond. Never mind living beyond the death of every single person you have cared for, known, or loved. Living beyond the passage of time, living beyond culture that you are aware of, seeing the entirety of the world change unfathomably in manners that, well, we're not equipped to deal with because we're not meant to be immortal. When we think about it, culture changes. When you're 80 years old and you look at the world, well, a lot of people in that situation, they no longer understand the world in the same way. They no longer have a grasp on reality in a sense because the world has changed so much since when they learned how to deal with it that it's a different beast. And when you are immortal, that is repeated a million fold. You get to watch everything change so radically, so often, that you would have no concept of culture or identity because you and everything you understood has turned to dust. You could potentially learn to deal with it and adapt and all of that, sure. And let's say you're one of those people that, despite the fact that everything you understood, knew, loved, or cared for has passed into dust, you can somehow deal with that. You can move on. Well, one day, humanity dies inevitably, eventually, whether it's because we kill ourselves, whether the planet blows up, or whether after millions of years of being spacefaring race and height of technology, the whole entirety of the universe falls apart, the stars die, and black holes consume everything, or whatever. That ends up happening, and yet, well, you're still there. You are still there. Everything has turned to dust, ground down by the inevitable entropy of time, and yet, there you still are. And what are you going to do with the rest of eternity? Alone. Completely and totally alone. And let's say it all condenses back into the singularity right at the beginning where a big bang is going to happen. Well, for billions upon billions upon billions of years, you will coexist with basic particles and energy. And that's it. There won't be a planet for you to look at, there'll just be energy. And on a scientific level, perhaps fascinating, but you'll be alone. Utterly and completely alone. And that is the true curse of immortality, is loneliness. Because whether we talk about it from the angle of you will be passed on by time and you will be left in the past, or the heat death of the universe occurs and you are truly and utterly alone in every meaning of the word, doesn't matter. You will be alone as someone who is truly immortal. And I don't know about you. I, maybe there are people out there that can look at true, complete loneliness and just say, well, that's not so bad. But for me, that would be the worst kind of hell where there is nothing to interact with but yourself. There is nothing to talk with. There is nothing to observe even beyond the ordered progression of the scientific universe. There's no chaos from humanity or sentient thought of any kind there. It's just you and that's it. So if I had to leave you with any lesson or thought from this discussion about immortality, it would be that don't be afraid of death because death gives meaning to life. The fact that one day we will die makes the finite existence we have in this world 
filled with meaning. Because, well, you have to make it matter then. You have to make it last in some manner. Because, yes, you will die. You are not immortal. And to me, that thought is liberating. It is wonderful to believe that what I do matters because it is finite. I ha when I choose to do something, something else m may not be done because I have a limited amount of time. I need to rush and enjoy things more and jump into things and experience life and grab it by the horns because I don't have forever. And I think when people say they desire immortality, they don't actually desire immortality. They desire a, that relief of the pressure of death. They desire to not fear that inevitable death. And rather than strive for immortality, I think we should strive to embrace our mortality. We should strive to embrace the fact that we will die and that because we will one day die, everything can have more meaning to it. We don't have to just exist in an eternity, just a continuation of moments. No, our life has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Thus it is a story. You can't have a story that never ends, can you? It's not interesting if there is no conclusion. And human life is much like that, in that it loses its interest and innate value when there is no conclusion. Just something to think about.